Okay. Well, while they're waiting, sure. uh, yesterday you got some good news. Would you like to expound on that, please? Uh, I suppose you're talking about the 2025 election. Yes. Um, yes, yesterday, uh, Mayor Sony, who was running in uh, the gubernatorial primary, uh, announced that he would now be running for lieutenant governor. Uh, so at this point, uh, I am the only declared candidate running for the Democratic nomination uh, for 2025. Uh, so, uh, you know, certainly I look uh, forward to continuing to work hard along the campaign trail uh, and earning the nomination if I end up not being the only one on the ballot. Um, or ensuring that I'm working hard through what would have been the primary towards general election. And uh, when I talked to you a few you want weeks me to ago, look yeah, here. Just this area okay. is fine. Um, <laughs> you said, you know, public schools were your biggest priority, what you hear people talking about, and now here we are today making sure the schools are safe. So let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. We're here today to give community project funding to uh, Madison County. This is a project that we work with directly with the county. Um, and in fact, last year, Sheriff Weaver brought this project to us, recognizing that having security in schools, having the ability for first responders to be able to communicate directly with uh, school uh, administrators uh, and, and educators uh, in the event of an emergency of any type uh, is a major priority for the county. And so we were able to work together to make sure that uh, we put forth a, a package and application through the appropriations process that secured uh, you know, uh, the funding to make this project a reality. And so I was pleased to be here with uh, uh, Superintendent Graham and Sheriff Weaver um, and uh, the County Administrator and Deputy County Administrator to focus on, you know, this partnership that we've had at the, at the local and federal level. And you will also be going to Greene County like after this. So can you talk about um, how you would want that investment that you're giving the county to help out in, in, in any way? Absolutely. So we worked with Greene County, uh, just as we've worked with Madison County um, and all the other counties that I represent to talk about what their priorities are. And in fact, very early on um, in the 118th Congress, I spent time out at the park in Greene County uh, with the, the park director where he talked about the need for security improvements, for access improvements, uh, talking about how the park really is the central piece of uh, the Greene County community. It's also incredibly important for the economy as it is a major way to attract folks to the county uh, with the events that they host. It's a community center with the programs that they run uh, and having uh, more than $700,000 to make those, uh, those changes and those additions to the park is vitally important to Greene. In addition to that, we work with the Sheriff's Department uh, to ensure that they could have funding for a virtual reality training program uh, to allow sheriff's deputies uh, on the ground training uh, through in a simulated environment for them to practice different types of responses uh, that might arise. It's an incredibly important tool and one that I'm, I'm really glad uh, Green will be able to bring to uh, its law enforcement officers uh, with these federal investments. Carver Center in Culpeper, Lynn Park in Culpeper, talk a little bit about that too. Uh, absolutely. So uh, in my work directly with Culpeper County, uh, we have been able to uh, do, you know, similar to what we've done in, uh, in, in Madison here and, and we're headed to Green next, uh, work directly with the community to uh, discuss the improvements to the Carver Center that uh, is a major driver of uh, community engagement. It's a major priority for the county and in fact, in years past, um, I've worked directly with Culpeper County uh, for improvements to the physical infrastructure of the Carver Center uh, because of the great benefit that it brings to the community. In fact, we've done a variety of roundtables hosted at that facility, uh, toward that facility, and so ensuring that now as they're looking towards the future um, and the way the community utilizes the Carver Center, uh, helping them support the investments to continue building out its uh, its focus as both a community center and uh, a, an asset to the local economy through the small businesses and producers that uh, that might use that space. I've uh, been happy to partner with them there. And uh, the next go-round money for the counties, I know Green is looking for possibility of applying for money for their uh, for their uh, water system. Um, and I know Madison is talking to you too. 
uh, you're obviously not running for re-election, so it gets started. It would go the fall on your your next the person in the seventh district to continue well, with that. So right now we. Unfortunately, we were very delayed, uh, I'll generously say, in, in getting our FY24 funding uh, through. Mm -hmm. And so the projects that we've been uh, talking about today are from FY24 projects. Right. Uh, that also means that FY25, uh, you know, which will the fiscal year beginning uh, later on this fall, uh, we're in the process of funding the federal government for FY25. So right now, you know, if everything were to be on track, we'd have that funding through by the end of September. Uh, I think we, we will probably, uh, if I'm looking at you know, recent history, we'll probably have uh, a, some funding extensions of FY24. Uh, but ultimately, we do need to have the FY25 funding uh, done and ready by the end of this Congress. So that would be by the end of December. So okay. my goal is to see this next round of community project funding through uh, and, and delivered. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll be back uh, into the future to see the, the fine results of what those investments will be. But it has been great to already be speaking with uh, the sheriff and uh, county officials about what it is that they want to uh, prioritize next. What is the, now back in Madison, what we're doing here today, what is the importance of school safety to foster a you know, productive learning environment that you want to push for in government? So as, uh, as a parent, I've got a, a daughter in elementary school, a daughter in middle school, and a daughter in high school. And so I recognize that you know, the, the feeling that a parent has when we send our kids off to school, that they're safe. Uh, that if there's ever any sort of emergency that first responders are able to respond uh, that is a priority because you know kids and teachers need to feel safe they need to uh, have that level of stability to be able to you know teach the students and for the students to learn and really the importance of uh, what what we worked on today uh, is to make sure that there can always be communication between first responders in the event that a child or a teacher has a medical event uh, it needs EMS to arrive on the scene quickly to ensure that the schools can be in direct contact and that it may not ever be disrupted is important. Uh, in the event that there's, you know, we've experienced, certainly Madison has experienced fires in, in the event that there's a weather event or, um, you know, a fire scenario that would impact the safety on the ground at a school um, or uh, nearby for first responders to be able to communicate very clearly with no dead spots, with no loss of signal, uh, just having that peace of mind that, you know, the dedicated uh, folks who serve as first responders across the county are able uh, to be in, in, in constant as much as they need contact with um, administrators and educators is vitally, vitally important. All right. Thank you, guys. Right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.